Richard Bandler, one of the co-developers of NLP, is truly a genius at continually developing newer and faster ways of achieving personal change. In recent years, Richard's been developing the area of submodalities. By this, I mean the smaller elements within the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic modality. This videotape was edited from a four-day advanced training that Richard taught in Boulder, Colorado, March of 1987. All the participants have had a 12-day advanced submodality training as well as an NLP practitioner training. Since Richard assumes this considerable background, he does use some words and some concepts that may not be familiar to someone without that background. Since Richard always non-verbally demonstrates what he's teaching while he's teaching, as well as incorporates other NLP methods, the videotape offers information at many levels simultaneously. The beginning NLPer can enjoy learning the particular pattern or method being taught, while someone with more advanced background can learn at multiple and deeper levels, particularly with repeated viewings. Uh, this morning what I want to do is continue somewhat along the same lines. But I, I want you to keep in mind that, that the piece that we do this morning, the first piece, has got, has got really two goals to it. What we're going to be working with is moods. Now, some of you, so you guys know about moods? You ever, you ever, you ever, have you ever had, you know, the one thing occurs that, that always amazes me is that you have similar experiences. You know, you, you go and you do virtually the day damn same thing as you did another time and it's just not it's just not as good or it's a lot better one or the other now that's fine well it is I mean but it's not that anything really different happens during the experience but there's this phenomenon that about having good days and bad days now I don't I don't think that this can be eradicated from the earth quite yet with the technology that we have darn I wish it could <laughs> But the one thing that you could do is you give yourself a lot, a lot more of one than the other. Now, what I want to do is I want to start with, with something because this, this, later on today, one of the things that I want to do is, is to get back to some sensory exercises that, that I've sort of perused around yesterday while you guys were doing elicitation. And, I, you know, I've always found the easiest way to do elicitation is to find someone who's easy. But there are, there are just those people that, you know, that, you know, it's like a change of client is sometimes the best technique to use. There's no doubt about it, you know. If you're having trouble doing something, switch the client, it works just like that. But given that we don't use change of client, there's, there's a lot of things that make elicitation uh, a lot easier. And, and especially, especially with the people who are very difficult. Uh, Robert and I uh, went last night and we were having a couple cocktails and, and he was asking me some questions about about, you know, because he, he would say, you know, there are these people and, you know, God, he'd go up there and he'd, you know, try to do something to be like pulling teeth, you know, it's just, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, the same person I'd turn around, you know, and uh, ask some questions and they'd start throwing out all this information like crazy. And uh, he, of course, you know, blessed me with that thing that, you know, it's that you sound like, you know, so convincing and so believable or something that somehow or other it makes it easier for people. And I told him it's not quite that mysterious. That, that basically one of the things that, that, that I do when, when I do elicitation, I want you to try a few of these things this morning. One of the things that I do is when I say list things for people, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to list them one at a time. It means you provide people with a variety of choices. So that when, when you ask somebody a question, for example, for example say, you could get one of these people, you know, you love them, the people that you go in and, you, and you, what you get for two hours is, but I don't know, right? Now, if you ask them, you know, do you have a picture? They will go, I don't know, right? Or better yet, I don't know. <laughs> now, you are going to encounter these people. If you ask them questions that presuppose the answers and, and the answers are, it's if you ask somebody how close their picture is, they will not go, I don't know. They will go right about here. The same person. Now, the thing is, is when you ask somebody a question, well, you know, do you see an image, you know, just before this, do you see any images? 
Well, the thing is, is that they're not just before it at that moment. So when they stop, what happens is, is that if they, you know, if the, you can always tell that your, the timing of your question is off, in that people will say to you, well, I could. Have you ever gotten that answer? Well, I could make it that way. Now, what that means is, is that, that the way in which you're asking the questions is, is inducing doubt in people because they don't know, they don't have a solid place of where to look for the answer. Now, the thing about, you know, if you tell somebody, go back, right, see what you saw at the time, hear what you heard, right? And then if you ask them, are there any pictures? That's ludicrous, because you've already told them to have them. Now, I heard a whole bunch of people do that yesterday. Now, I, I, you know, I realized you were just out there having a good time, but the one thing is, is while you're having a good time, you're making this harder for yourself. If, if the thing is, is that, is that I want you to begin this morning to tune yourself up. Okay, I'll give you a couple of tricks. You should be able to tell how far the picture is by where they focus their eyes. Right? Now, the thing is, it's like, if, I mean, when somebody, fo when somebody tells you a picture is 12 feet away, they don't do this. <laughs> right? I mean, you know, this is like that, right back to that old stuff. You remember that old stuff about sensory experience? Right? You remember all that old stuff, you know, where you have to tune up your senses and all that stuff? Well, I mean, this is, this is the ultimate place to use it. I mean, some, somebody came up to me uh, in a seminar I did about three or four weeks ago and said they were so glad they didn't have to do that stuff anymore because it was too hard to have sensory experience. <laughs> and I looked at that person and I said, I believe you. you know. <laughs> and in their case, it was extremely true. Um, you know, it's, it's always nice to have a conversation with somebody who turns their head and talks to you like this. They go, they, and especially when the first thing out of their mouth is, is you know, when I look at you, <laughs> think, <laughs> thank you very much. So I always like to sneak away when they do that. Right, so when they turn back, I'm not there. So someday, <clears throat> someday what I'm gonna do is gonna get a tape recorder. And when somebody does that, I'm just gonna put the tape recorder there and turn on the answers. Right, when they turn around, they're still gonna hear the voice and no one will be there. And I'll get to find out whether they notice or not. <laughs> now, the other thing is, is that, there, the, is that I want you to begin to work for yourself on realizing that tempo is, especially your voice tempo, is essential in elicitation. Because remember, this is, all this stuff is a function of timing. That, that you know, when, when you set up submodalities, they are something that is in flux. Remember the old stuff about strategies where you put the A sub D and there was the arrow and then you put, you know, you put a V and a C and stuff like that? You guys remember that? Some of you look very pained when I bring that up. <laughs> that person in the back went, <clears throat> you know. And said, well, see, I never liked that shit. One of the things, well, I'll tell you what I didn't like about it is, is what's in the arrow, right? Now, there was a big division at the time because I used to make people worry about what was in the arrow. Like, how long did that arrow take? Right? Okay. And what happened while it was arrowing? <laughs> now, uh, you know, if you, went from, if you went from one step in a strategy to the next step, was it, was it a congruent response? In other words, if somebody went, went from a picture to a feeling, right, did, did they have a feeling that matched the picture? Because some people would have the opposite, you know, they'd, they, you know, they'd see themselves getting up to go to work and they'd feel weighted down, right, and they couldn't get out of bed. Now, the thing is, is that to me, I wanted to know, well, how do you do that, right? Now, the, the answer to that, of course, is, is a lot of what submodalities is about. When you, st if, if, you pick, if you pick, you know, a state, for example, I, everybody's got it, when, when you get struck by heavy gravity and laziness. Now, especially there's the kind where it feels really good, too. You know, it's like a lot of times when you work, you know, I don't, me, you know, I've got and I'll work 20 days on the road, right, and the first day I get back where I don't have to get up, right, you know, it'll be a thing where when I wake up in the morning, you know, I, you know, I'll have to, I'll have to have, an, you know, I'll have to, I'll fight tooth and nail before I'll go urinate in the morning. <laughs> right? It's like, oh, it looks so far away, <laughs> right. Now, if I took that, the set of submodalities of that state, right, and put them across what I'm doing right now, right, it's, it's, it's not something that, that would be fruitful by any means. 
it would be a lot like a lot of the people that worked in these hotels, especially the room service guys. And some of these out of sundry other people. It would be exactly like everyone. They test you, by the way, when you get hired at an airline to find out whether or not you operate your life in, in slow speed. Uh, I don't know who programmed the computers for reservation desks, but I mean, that pro those programmers should have been taken out, you know, and given a lot more methadone. Because, I mean, I, you know, here they, they have your reservation, they have your name, they have all the data, the flight, they have a machine that compute all this stuff lightning fast, and they have a guy that sits there and types for 15, 20 minutes. Right, while you sit there and go like this, and you know, and the thing, and what they're doing is that they, they have a program where they give them the list of flights, and then he has to type each one before he gets the data. I mean, which is preposterous. The machine has already got it typed, right? You know, they just number them. The guy could just press numbers. You know, home computers do that, <laughs> don't they? Right, but uh, you know, when the airlines went out and looked for a consultant, they go, they go, do you use menu lists? And the guy goes. Menu list, and they went hired. <laughs> now, the same sort of functioning is, 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 the, is the shift that you need to make in your own elicitation now. Is that, is that basically, what, one of the things that I keep telling people is that elicitation is a listing program. In other words, what you want to do is provide people with a menu. When you, when you ask people questions like, is there a difference in the distance, the color, or the size? right between the first one and the second one go check now what happens is is they have to check real fast and they have to check three things so they're gonna they're gonna leave them the same first they're gonna go tsh, tsh. now if you keep people moving when you do this the quality of the information you get is much better because they don't do things like well is it the distance <laughs> right and then they come up and they tell you things like they go well you know they're both the same distance but they're not both the same distance. They've already changed it. Now, the problem is, is that, is, I mean, that's well and fine to change it, as long as it gets changed in the direction you want. Now, you'll discover a lot of times that people will, will when you know, you're doing elicitation, things will change. You want to be able to control the direction in which that goes. Now, I want to tell you a couple of basic tricks. And this is something that you know genetically, although I was listening yesterday, and some of you made it get in your own way. We have in English questions, statements, and commands. Okay? Now, questions are the ones with the inflection that goes up. Okay? <laughs> commands are the ones with the inflection that goes down. So if you go, if you say, if you, if you, if you say is there any difference in the distance? Right? It, people's pictures float away. It's a command. Now, that's fine when you want, when you want to make a change. So to me, I ask questions when I'm doing it. But they're not questions. They're commands. They're embedded, they're embedded commands. They're conversational postulates. Now, there's an, the, the other thing is, is when you want information from somebody, that is, you want them to speak, raise your eyebrows. It forces people to feel like they have to talk. Right? When you want them to shut up and go on the inside, lower your eyebrows or they will not shut up they can't it's part of our language it's part of m almost all languages uh, that when somebody is when you're talking to somebody and you go you, and you do things like you go okay Dale I want you to stop and go inside <laughs> Dale goes but I can't leave now <laughs> I must speak <laughs> Let me, let me tell you about why I think I have this problem and where it came from and all the root experiences and how many times I've gone to therapy and anything else I can think of till you put your goddamn eyebrows down. <laughs> now, it, I, but believe me, this stuff, this nonverbal stuff is incredibly powerful. That, uh, <laughs> that you know, I mean, I, uh, this one person in here, I thought, I thought, I thought they're going to pull their hair out if they had to ask this person again, you know, to go, they'd say, now, I want you to go check that. Right? And the person would go, well, you know, I don't know if it is or not. You know, the person, they said, well, go, go inside and check it. And the person went, well, you know, in my other strategies, you know, and you know, I thought it was, ah! Right, you know, just lower your voice and your eyebrows. That, you know, you're giving somebody, when you tell somebody to go inside and check something, it's a command. It's not a question. When you leave it as a question, they start rambling. 
Then you go, go inside, compare the two. Find out if there's a difference in size, distance, and color. Go do it. Go, go do it. When you say, go do it, and they go, well, I don't know, you know, because you asked them a question. Now, I, you know, I realize, you know, you start doing this stuff, you kind of get excited, and you sort of forget about yourself. But, you know, that in this stuff, you are the tool. When, when you're doing elicitation, that, uh, that, you know, as, as you, you know, get tuned up in this stuff, the kind of stuff we're going to do this afternoon, is, is, is things about how to, instead of have these things work against you, things about having them work for you. That, you know, that a lot of the times that, uh, you know, for those of you that have seen me just go one-on-one -on -one with somebody, is that, you know, there's, there's silly little hand gestures I make, like, you know, take that picture, now, take a good look, right? Now, surprise, that has something to do with distance, right? That, that you know, that, that a lot of times that, you know, when you're talking about say, taking a picture, right? And I mean, literally, I'll take it like this, and I'll say, now, <laughs> right? It's that simple. You go, now, what I want you to do is, is just brighten that image and focus in on a part of it. Now, tell me exactly. And see, I'm still asking people questions about, you know, by the time I'm getting around to changing it, they still think I'm trying to find out. Because I leave my voice that way. I go, I go, you know, I'm going, I don't really understand this. You know, this makes you feel that way? Does this make you feel that way? And they'll go, no. <laughs> and I'll go, good. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I'll always usually go back at the end and do it maybe one time explicitly. But the thing you're trying to find out is, is that, that, that things, for example, things like I, disco I discovered one of, one of the things is I discovered how to put myself in a bad mood like this. That I discovered that, <clears throat> that that part of the things is, is that when you get in a bad mood, you know, I started changing the proportions of things inside my internal states and things about the color hues and then making the outside look that way. Now, the thing is, is that what do people say? I feel off balance. You know, that's one of the descriptions of bad days and stuff like that. That, yeah, uh, <clears throat> I, was, I was talking to uh, Steve the, this morning and we were speaking of ways to get off balance. It's, for example, uh, you know, we were talking about tilting pictures yesterday, right? Well, make a panoramic one, okay? Step inside it and then tilt it. All right? Now, how'd you like to go through a whole day like that? Don't think so. I'd rather straighten up, straighten out. These phrases sound familiar, you know? And, you know, straighten up. Okay, now, what, what I want you to elicit this morning is I want you to go and find uh, a state in the other person that has to do with the following qualities. Now, some people you may have to see. What we did yesterday was a little bit about how you build a state. In other words, you take two things that are kind of like it and take the best of both to make it. Now, you may have to do that or they may have one. Now, this is not, by the way, I am not looking for uptime. You know that shit about uptime, right? Well, I found out that people in uptime a lot of times get stuck there, right? And then they can't have any internal experience, right? And, you know, a lot of times being a good functioning human being requires you have a little sensory experience. It's that you don't have a lot, right? Like more than you have external experience. Uh, that, you know, it's, it's real difficult to see through your list of submodalities, right? You have to be able to go check something and go back to it instead of, you know, uh, that, you know, and I, I'll do these workshops and we pass out the little list. So a lot of times people never look up from it, right? Because, I mean, when you ask people questions, especially if you do it in groups of three, which is usually my choice, you know, I go in and check, you know, is it, you know, is it color, you know, is it panoramic, is it this, right? I haven't checked in groups of three. I figure they can handle that much, you know. My thing is, is human memory is one plus or minus two. Uh, <coughs> I, as far as I can tell, <laughs> you know, and the minus two is very strong early in the day <laughs> and late at night for others, you know, uh, you know, 
Usually, usually for me, it's minus two before noon, you know, or 11 o'clock or something. But of course, it's 11 o'clock where? That, uh, that if I've been considering changing the time on my watch, but if I do it when I get back to California, I'll have to change it back again. Right? And then I'll really be confused because I might make the same mistake and change it the same way again. You know, it took me a long time to get that fall forward, spring back, you know, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> you know, that thing, you know, daylight savings comes along where you fall forward and spring back. That's why I don't go on daylight savings time. I gave it up. That's right, you know, for, you know, for a period of six weeks there, you know, I was hours early or hours late, you know. And, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, is, I mean, daylight savings was invented to save candlelight, right? Now, the other thing is, is who are these people running the government that are still trying to save candle wax? You know, they make us get up in the dark now and turn on a light to go to work to save candle wax. Now, the thing about the kind of mood that I want you to look for is I want you to look for a mood that, that it will be something that you will find along the lines of, have you ever just woken up and felt really good? It was, you know, it didn't, didn't take any effort to get out of bed. You just felt good. Everything went easy. You know, there's, uh, I always loved a line in, in one of the movies I saw was that there was somebody that had written a story. And the, the first line in the story is that he was like the country he was born in. Everything came easy to him. Now, the thing is, is that that's what you're, what you're looking for. The thing is, is that you do not need to be that, you know, when we used to do that stuff where, you know, with people with the color changes and all that stuff, we, you know, still do it. I don't emphasize it so much because people do this, they go, right? Now, it doesn't help to hurt your eyes to, to see, you know, doing this is not going to help you to see color changes. That, you know, uh, holding your breath, right? for two to three minutes at a shot is not going to increase the quality of your vision. Asking a question and going, but, uh, the only thing that's going to do is make the world real blurry and fuzzy. Now, the thing is, is that when you're in that particular groove where just everything flows, you know, I mean, I'm talking making breakfast. I mean, you know, if you have a phone call to make, you don't have to discuss it with yourself. You just do it. You know, it's like everything. It's not like it doesn't, it doesn't require, you know, it doesn't require massive amounts of coffee to accomplish a task, right? <laughs> you know, no chewing on the end of the pencils. You just write what you want to say. You know, if you have a letter, you know, it may be that you had a letter you wanted to write for five weeks, man, and you don't even think, you know, I have to do this. You just look down at it, and you just write it, and you fold it up, and you put it in the envelope, and you put a stamp on it, and put it in the mailbox, and it only takes a minute. You know, and then, you know, you just move on because you're in one of those moods. Now, that is the state at which this stuff is a lot easier, right? That, you know, it's not the... <sighs> well, let's see. Um... Uh, see, uh, now, um, see, that, as, as I noticed the ease and comfort with which some of you are doing the graceful, see, I, you know, you see, it's one thing, it's one thing to know elicitation, it's another, it's another to know what state to be in when you do it. Yeah. See, <laughs> see, it's, it's, a uh, you know, gentleman back here, uh, uh, so one thing is he found out that when he was doing this, his blood pressure was going up 40 points. Now, this, this, will not help, this will not help you to do the task. It may kill you, however. <laughs> but we are going to have that stop right now and go the other way. What we're looking for is a state where your senses operate and where you're comfortable. That, you know, for, for those of you who have, who have seen, like, the Marshall University films and, you know, or have seen me, you know, where I do things with individuals, the one thing is, is that is I don't freak out with them. Right? I mean, people come in and they're telling me, you know, well, you know, I, I, I'll get in my car and I'll be, dr I'll be driving out of town. I have a psychotic episode and, you know, and they, they freak out, you know, and I look and I always look at them and I go, wow, really? You know, <laughs> and they start feeling kind of proud and they go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is a, 
Now, I've been to 60 doctors, none of them could fix it. <laughs> and I go, God, what a waste. You know, and I go, how do you do that? Right, and they go, well, you know, first thing you do is you gotta make this big picture here. You know, and I go, is it in color? And they go, oh yeah, man. Now, see, if you start doing, if you start doing things like, it, see, the attitude with which I approach this and the state with which I approach this elicits from the other person never anything about there being a difficulty or a problem, whether it's something positive or not. It's something, it's something where my fascination with how people do this, I mean, is, to tell you the truth, it's so sincere in me. Because, you know, I can't, I mean, well, I've been being stuck in Huntington, West Virginia for six years, right, you know. I mean, it's a wonder the man lived to me. I'm fast now. I go, Jesus Christ, you know. That's pretty wild stuff, you know. Maybe I could learn this and stay home for six years, you know. And that's the way I'm thinking about it. I'm, you know, to me, I'll find a use for anything. I'm going, wow, man, six years without an airplane. And I mean, this guy's going, I'm trapped, you know, my life is ruined, you know, I can't do this. And I'm going, I can use this. <laughs> now, and I go, hey, you know, I can fill in for you for a day, just tell me how. That this particular attitude, and also the voice tone and the tempo, because I'm not giving people a chance to confuse themselves. I'm going, well, wait a minute, you know, you don't do this all the time. I go, you know, uh, when does it start? Not how does it start. See, start is a when question. Now, I asked somebody, somebody I heard of yesterday, how does it start? And they got the classic answer. I don't know, <laughs> right? And of course, you know, when you get somebody sitting across from you going, I don't know, as an embedded command, right? The I part drops out and you are starting to get somebody sitting across from you looking at you for hours going, don't know, don't know. Pretty soon you go, know what? <laughs> Gotta understand, this hypnosis stuff works both ways, okay? Now, this is, you don't want to give them a chance to tell you you don't know. Because when they go, I don't know, you go, I do too. <laughs> now, when was it? <laughs> the thing is, is when you ask people a when question, you get things about times. When you ask them things like, for example, to, you know, if you go, is there color? Now, I want you to stop and think about that question. I heard you ask, I heard people asking that yesterday, going around looking at somebody going, is there color? <laughs> <laughs> Of course there's color. It's everywhere. No, the thing is, is what colors, right? And if they go, well, it's full color, right? They answer you. But I mean, I want you to, when you think about some modalities, they have to do with time. They have what questions. But I mean, this, you know, it's like looking at somebody and going, how the carpet? Right? <laughs> I want you to watch carefully how the carpet. <laughs> When are you this morning? <laughs> now, I know when you're doing this, you get locked into it. You kind of forget a little bit. So I was kind of drifting around doing this stuff. The thing is, is that I would, you know, it's like your questions are starting to come out that way because you're jumping the gun a little bit. You have to understand that, that when you want to ask a question or a command, mostly it's best to give people the command, go get me this data, right? And you, and you want to know what color is it? You know, and if they go, then they can say, well, it's not just one, it's two. But if you, you know, when you ask people, if you, when you ask people, are there pictures in your mind before you do this? Now, I heard somebody ask that question yesterday. Are there pictures in your mind before you do this? <laughs> Listen to the question. That is a weird question. <laughs> so, well, well, the, I mean, are there pictures in your mind before you do this? What? <laughs> For Christ's sake, you know. It's a, they don't even tag it back to the referential index of what the subject was. You know, I mean, you know, they assume, you know, oh, yeah, the guy remembers we're looking for this state of consciousness. Don't ever assume that. When I, just because I listed on the board or when you say, look, I want you to think of a time, you know, when you were just, you know, really felt wonderful and excited, you know. Are there pictures in your mind before you do this is a whole other thing 
that do this, they come out real different. You know, one puts you right into a spin, and the other ties the referential index. Without that tag down on the end of the question, where it becomes a command, do this, right? Now, then what happens is, is that, is that if I ask you, you know, well, I know there are times where you just, you know, you have one of those days where you just glide through everything and things are wonderful. Are there pictures on your mind before you do this? What's going to happen is, is you're not going to get quality data. You can hear the difference if I say, you know, now, go back and see the pictures in your mind, right? Or see what you saw at the time and hear what you heard, right? And tell me, how close are the pictures, right? You're, what's going to happen is, is you get, you get a much better quality of data. You will get a lot less of people going, um, yeah, you know, I could make it that way, right? Because, I mean, if people say, if people tell you they can do it like that, you go, all right, don't. Do what it really is. That'll really get them. Then they'll go, uh. <laughs> The thing is, is that you can tell whether or not they're doing the right thing by how they look. I, you know, if they, I mean, I saw one, I, you know, when I saw one person yesterday, I mean, we were dealing with what I would consider to be a fairly ecstatic state, right? I mean, something, you know, I was kind of dealing with a little pleasure yesterday. This guy's gone. He's going, well, I don't know if it's like this or not. And I mean, you know, my guess is, is no, it's not. <laughs> right off the top of my head, that's not it. You know? And I mean, you just got to be blunt with people. When you look at their face and it don't match, just say, it. that's not it. Go to another one. <laughs> don't waste your time. Don't go through and elicit all the size and the shape and the color and the voice tone or something when you don't like, you know, when you know it's not it. You know, I mean, you know, if you're looking at anxiety and somebody's like this, you know, that's not it. I swear to you, it isn't. It's just not the one, right? You know, it's like you know when you know we're doing something where we're you know we're we're looking at you know uh, states like you know of general well-being. Somebody's doing this, you know, that's not it. I'm sorry, it's not it. You know, the thing is, is tell them no, move right on, go to the next one. Uh, you know, it sometimes takes people a while, and they they people are so apt to want to please, they'll tell you anything. Uh, you know that, you know, very often that when you start to get I don't knows, you are not commanding the person. And remember that, 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 that the thing is, is that, is that when you want to be helpful to somebody, the thing to do is to make it so they can get where they want to go. That uh, above and beyond everything else, you know, what we do here is a profession. And with the profession, you know, it comes skill, some professions, I can name a few that don't have any skills, but that, that, that have skills, and in this one, it's, it's not to manipulate somebody, it's to direct them to get where they want to go. That, you know, I keep hearing all this nonsense about NLP being manipulative. Of course, these people are out there saying it, aren't manipulating anyone at the moment they're saying it. They're going, oh, if you study NLP, NLP is that real manipulative stuff. You know what I mean? Can you <laughs> feel this? <laughs> is important? Now, the, the thing is, is that I want you to pay close attention to your own language. Listen to yourself when you speak. Realize that, that tempo, that part of what will tie together, that what you're trying to build when you do a licitation is, a, is an experience that's a single unit. In other words, from the point where you start collecting data to the point where you either get the data or you have changed the person in some way that you want, is something that is, it's like a trance. It should be a unit, right? It's not, it's not the kind of thing where you, where you really want to break away from it. What, if you can get them into the state, right, and back and forth between those states rapidly, see, and, and with the sense that, that it's not that you're trying to figure something out and go back and forth. You're trying to get them to go back and forth while you, while you observe it. Listen to it and document it that as you have people go, go between the, the, uh, the, the three, well, I'm going to do three states again because I'm, we're going to pull a little trick, but I'm going to save one of them for later. Right now, I'm going to have you go back and forth between a quasi-day 
and one of those days where everything flows. The thing is, is that well, one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I want you to be able to put yourself in the state where it flows to do this. That, that, that many, many of you are struggling unnecessarily. And one of the reasons that that, that, that struggle was there was because the way you approached elicitation is as if the questions were a unit in time. The activity, when you sit down and focus your attention on that person, is the beginning of an event that temporarily ends when you're done. Now, the thing is, is that if you're going to go through the trouble to get him into a state, the thing is, is that you're trying to get him there. You're trying to get them into a state where they can go back and forth between that quasi day and the good day, and you can watch them. It's like you had two anchors where you were going, bam, bam, bam. And you keep them flowing back and forth between those states. What they're doing is they're changing the submodalities back and forth between the two states, i.e. getting control over their brain. Now, it also, see, the, I told you the task of elicitation and the task of installation are not profoundly different. The thing is, is that it, there's a certain amount of momentum and, and that, see, it's, it's one thing when I've gone and I've taught people, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, and they go, they don't build up that flow. The tempo, see, because in essence, you gotta think of it as, is that what you're doing is keeping up a rhythm. There's a rhythm to elicitation that, that allows you to go, all right, I'm gonna get these pieces and these pieces and now these and now those, now these and now those. But as you go through it, basically what you're learning is things about the chunk size. Some people can only tell you two at a time, some three, some more. Some, some people, you gotta start with the auditory, some with the visual. Now, you, the thing is, is what you're looking for is the state at which it becomes easy for them to answer the questions. You're looking, and you know what state that is? When they can easily move back and forth between the two states. When they get to the point where they have the flexibility to go back between what they saw and what they heard when they were in that easy day versus a day that was not that easy, right? And they can go between it and replace it and replace it. You're getting them to use their mind to go into that state and then go into this one. It's a training program. You remember the swish pattern that when you learned it, if, if you learned it from me, or my guess is as if, if, if you learned it from Connie Ray or Steve or whoever you learned it from, that since they had to learn it from me and I always tell people, I assume that they told you that basically what happens is, is you're telling the brain, not this, this, not this, this. Well, this is the same thing. You're saying, this can be this, could be this, could be this. And we're going, not this, this. <laughs> now, not this, this. Now, you've got to have that rhythm in your elicitation, or it would be hard to get the data, and it will also mean you have to go through all the trouble to change them in difficult ways later on. You have to do things that take 10 and 15 minutes of your whole day. You know what I mean? You know, and then you gotta have that nonsense where people go, well, you know, because you know, if you don't really have them in the States, then you say, now go back and think about it, and they go, yeah, you know, it feels a little better. You know, the, it's less anxiety. You ever had anybody say, well, the anxiety isn't as much, and you go, you think that's, you think that anxiety's anxiety? Watch this. <laughs> You know, now let's take that and anchor it to, to my door. <laughs> That's where you play a change of client. <laughs> you know. then, then what you do is you pick, you, pick, you pick the nilpers you don't like the most and you send them to them. That's right. What you do is you get a person, you mess them all up and send them in. And, tell, and then what you do is you install a hypnotic thing where as, as soon as they agitate, you know, the other clinician, then all of their problems start to go away. <laughs> right? So the more they see the other person becoming agitated, the, the more of a better sense of well-being they'll have. <laughs> Little cybernetics there. We used to do that in seminars. We used to split the groups and take them aside and assign people tasks where they would go in. And if, if the, if, you know, because you can do things like, 
Like, if you just begin to smile when somebody rubs their face, after a while, their hands are glued. I mean, it really does. I mean, that kind of conditioning works very strongly and very quickly in human beings. What we want to do is to make it work the other way so that what we do is create states of well-being in someone. And the thing is, is that, is that when, <clears throat> when, pe if, when people tell you things, you know, don't look concerned, worried. Just be fascinated and be fascinated with it if it's one thing. When you go, well, what's the difference, you know, between, you know, the, uh, the location of the picture, you know, in the, in the, you know, in the negative experience versus the positive one, right? Well, you know, this is not the electrical theory of human behavior here. The thing is, is that, you know, everything, you know, the bad day thing's got, it's got its qualities. It just needs to be contextualized in the right place, and it's dynamite. All you got to do is be out to steal them all. And I mean, if you have in your mind, you know, the old, the, the, old, the story in the, the book that was initially about this, I, unfortunately it is not out yet. It, it is lost in the filing cabinets of time. <laughs> it's, it's, I went out and looked at my filing cabinets. They finally got them out of the storage thing and put them in the, the place I just moved into, right? And I went out and looked at the filing cabinets and I opened the drawers and uh, I decided that I'm, it may be easier to just, instead of finish these books, just start and write new ones. <laughs> it's, uh, there's, I've never seen so much paper in my whole life. I'm a word processor man. I don't believe in paper. And, but this stuff is from before word processors were around. In the book, The Fabric of Reality, there's a story of, of a thief that, that's in the future. And in those days, they have a way of extracting behaviors and attitudes from people. Uh, through high tech. And they basically, you know, when you have, you know, an attitude problem or something, you go in and they attach this thing to the side of your head and it goes, <laughs> sucks it out, dumps it in this bin. And there are two thieves in this future place that think, look at all of those attitudes and behaviors that are sitting there. And sit and they go, we could sell these. So they steal it. And basically what they do is they, they steal it and they turn around and they find, because you see, What's, what's a bad attitude for, for one person in one situation, right, may be a very appropriate attitude that somebody else is missing in another or the same person. I mean, there, I mean you know, it's for example, that, I, mean, you know, that there, I mean, there are times where, where being able to act and behave the way you are when you're grouchy is incredibly useful. There are times where people are just too polite and it's inappropriate. And it's a waste of time. And the thing is, is that they're grouchy, they're grouchy at the wrong times. Now, the thing is, is that is to begin to make changes in, in, in some of this, I mean, you know, you don't need to go through and sweep your whole life out. Perfection is not what we're after here. What we're after is more better. That's all. All we want is more better. Right? It's like, you know, so when I, you know, I get people who come up to me and they go, well, with all this technology and all this stuff, how could you still have any problems? And I go, with people like you, how could I not? You know, it's going to bother me, go away, boy. So I go, I go, you seem like a very important person to me. You're, you're much too busy to do these things now. Go away and fail at life. Stop, go inside. <laughs> now, we're going to come on the outside. And what I want you to do is get your partner. I want you to find that state. But I also want you to concentrate on being in it, too. In other words, I want you to concentrate. I want you to listen to your voice tone, realize you're giving commands, and realize that what you want to do is run through a licitation and, you know, and realize, go, say to the person, you know, I mean, if you're looking for how they're in, they get in a groove and have that good day and how they have a bad day, you know, I mean, say to him, it sounds nice. You go, look, you go, if we can get through this, you know, think about it. I could have your bad days, and you could have your good ones, and you could have my good ones, too, if we do this right.